All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Makar Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on another one of the numerous lessons, man, on the new covenant, right? And speaking about how how is it that you Christians still haven't got it through your how is it that you Christians still haven't got it through your head yet that um the new covenant is for the Israelites, man? How is it that you still haven't got it through your head? That the new covenants for Israel, man. And I'm gonna speak about this, man. Right? This is Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. I Yahweh will hasten it in his time. Now, how is it that? How is it that all the people are going to be righteous, man? What is it that's going to take place for all the people to be righteous? Because is it is it talking about all people in the world in their scriptures are going to be righteous? Is it saying that, right? Is, is, is there a scripture that's saying that every single person on the earth is going to be righteous? Or is it a specific people that are all going to be righteous? Well, I'll answer that question right now. The all are talking about all Israelites. All is, The day is going to come where all Israelites are righteous man and let me go to this first in fact let me go to this man romans chapter 11 <clears throat> romans chapter 11 and verse 26 and so all israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of zion the deliverer that shall turn away ungodliness from jacob for this is my covenant unto them when i shall take away their sins so the thing that's going to cause for all the israelites to be righteous is going to be this covenant that's going to be given, right? And it's ultimately going to be given to every Israelite, right? But some are going to get it in a time coming, to time to come. But some are going to get it through reincarnation, through being born back again, through those people that were found worthy in the day of the Lord to receive mercy, man, right? Now, let me let me show why I'm saying that. Let me show, let me read this again. Let's see if what it sparks in my mind. Romans chapter 11 and verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now let's find where that's written, right? Because it says, as it is written, right? And the place where that's written is in Isaiah the 59th chapter, right? And let's show it. Isaiah 59 and like 20 or something. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. So they shall fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith Yahweh, As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith Yahweh, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, now out of the mouth of thy seed, now out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith Yahweh from henceforth and forevermore. And that's talking about the new covenant that Israelites are going to receive, man. And uh, the people don't, it's still amazing, man. You can take the biggest, baddest Christian out there, right? That thinks that they just know all the scriptures. They know every single Greek word. They can speak Greek, Latin. They can speak Yiddish, right? They try and mock you for when you call yourself an Israelite, right? They try to ask you whether you whether you can speak Hebrew and all of that. They think that they're so intellectual and they think that they just got it all together. And I think they're just the smartest person in the world. As soon as you ask them what the new covenant is, you won't see them go to where I'm going right now. And if you do see them go to it, then you're going to also witness somebody lying to your face. Right? You're going to witness a man lying right to your face, trying to tell you and trying to make you not see what you're reading and not, and not actually see what you can clearly see and not hear what you can clearly hear. Right? This is Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although as a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Now let's read a little bit about what that's talking about right there. Because sometime when I read this, I don't even go to the scripture, but I'm going to go to it today. This is Exodus chapter 24 and verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh 
and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, the Ishmaelites, they have twelve tribes, but it wasn't the twelve tribes that this is be, the, being done for, the twelve tribes of Israel, right? And Ishmael also came from Abraham. But why didn't he get a mention in this, right? Esau had sons at this time. Why is he not getting a mention in this, right? They also come from Abraham, right? But where is their mention in this, man? Where is their, where is their call out and shout out for this bit, for this covenant? Where is the people that was part of that so-called mixed multitude? Why ain't they getting a mention in there? Why is it only the children of Israel that are getting a mention? Since everyone likes to talk about the great multitude, the mixed multitude all of a sudden, why ain't they getting mentioned in this then? Because it's not for them. Verse 5, And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the ordinance of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh have said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which Yahweh have made with you concerning all these words. And it wasn't just with them. It was also going to be with their seed line. And that's why it's stupid when you've got Israelites out there that they want to say stuff like, oh, I didn't agree to be part of this covenant. Listen, man, if you don't think you deserve the bad things that happen according to the covenant, well, then guess what? When the good things come around, you ain't going to deserve them neither. Right? If you don't think you deserve to be cursed for not keeping the laws, well, then why should you get the blessings for keeping the laws then? Why should you? We everything bad that's ever happened to us, we deserve it, man. If we get sick, we deserve it, right? If we get something stolen from us, we deserve it, man. Anything that's happened to you, you deserve it, right? And 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 when when good things are happening to you, guess what? You don't deserve those, right? We don't deserve the good things that happen to us, and we do deserve the bad things that happen, man, right? Because we have never lived a compare a perfect life in our life, man. Not once, not one Israelite out there has lived a perfect life out there in his life apart from Yahweh Shai. Only Yahweh Shai has. And he's had to, he, in his lifetime that he came, he suffered in that lifetime, man. Eh? Even though he lived perfectly. And we bore his trend. You know what? Let me not even try and be too slick with it, man. Let me read it, man. Let me read that bit. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of Yahweh, and afflicted, for he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai. All these people that want to try and say it's talking about somebody else. No, it's not, man. It's talking about Yahweh Shai, man. And if you want to get proud, well, when the when when Yahweh brings something upon you. It's not hard for it's not hard for him to heal a man. And it's not hard for him to purge one either and plague one. He didn't doesn't the scripture say that he smote Antioch's epiphanies with an invisible and incurable plague. So nobody could see what was wrong. Right? But they could smell it though. And they could see it, they could see in terms of his pain, but they couldn't actually see what was wrong with him, man. They couldn't actually see where, what was what the actual plague was because it was invisible. It says in the scriptures, if I'm not mistaken, it says invisible and incurable plague, man. Right? And you know what? Since I mentioned that, let's take it there too. Let me see if I can let me see if I can um let me see if I can prove that to point two. I'm pretty sure it says an invisible and incurable plague. Yep. This is second Ezra chapter nine and verse five. But Yahweh Almighty, but the Lord Yahweh Almighty. The power of Israel smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels was that was remediless, that was remediless, came upon him and saw torments of the inner part. So nobody could see what was going on with that, but yet he was still plagued, man. And that's why you can't try and um, you can't try and mess with your man, because we can be given invisible plagues too. We can be given invisible plagues, man. Well, getting proud because we know the scriptures and because we, 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 we know what Israelites even Yahweh ain't rocking with that, man, because anyone can get jacked up, man. Anybody can. 
Anybody can think that they're strong in the body and then they get shown that actually I'm going to turn your body into a weak thing real quick right now on the spot, man. And then them same people that used to flex on with your muscles see you in your in your um catabolic state, man. That can happen. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days comes there for hour that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, why is it not mentioning nobody else in there, man? Why is it not mentioning no one else in there? Why is it not saying the house of Magdiel and the house of Amalek? Why is it not saying that in there? Since that everything's for everybody. Or why doesn't it just say that I will make a covenant with the world? Why doesn't it say that? Why do you Christians have to try and, when it comes to this part of the Bible, spiritually become a nation all of a sudden? Why, can't you, why doesn't it just mention your nation that you're from? Why doesn't it say Gentiles in here anyway? Why not? And why can't you find this covenant written to any other group of people by name? Why can't you find it, man? Why is it not written in, in these scriptures to any other people by name? Why not? Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31 again. Behold, the days come, say, if you have that, I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, or do as a husband unto them, say, if you have now this part, when you when you read this to a Christian, they'll say, see, it's not like the covenant. Well, I know it's not. It's better than it. And that's why it says in Hebrews 8th chapter, which this isn't what I'm reading from, but that's why it says in Hebrews 8th chapter, that it's a better covenant established on better promises. Which let me prove that. I think it's 8 and 6. Hebrews chapter 8. But it doesn't say better covenant. It says better ministry. No, it does say better covenant. Excuse me. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. But now have you obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also is the mediator of a better covenant. Which was established upon better promises. Right, so it is a better covenant than the previous one, right? So it, of course it's not going to be the same as the covenant that was made in the land of Israel because that covenant was didn't have any faults in it, but the people that was it was given to did have faults. Let's prove that. Um, let's prove that. Isaiah chapter sixty three. And verse 17, O Yahweh, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and hardened our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thine inheritance. Now, who are the tribes of Yahweh's inheritance? The Israelites. Now, let me get another scripture that I've got written down next to that bit that I've just wrote read there in Psalms 19. Now, let's see what that says. I think I already know anyway. But you whatever is watching don't know what i'm going to read it this is psalms 19 and verse 12 who can understand his errors cleanse down me from secret faults so the israelites have got secret things that are wrong with them that only yahweh knows how to rectify those things man and that's where you've got people in our nation right that they'll say we ain't un we aren't under curses man they don't want to try they ain't trying to hear that they're thinking that the reasons why we're going through bad things is because we've been manipulated by the bible yeah but if that was true then how come wouldn't wouldn't the plague and the curse only be on those people that are being made docile by the Bible? Then? Wouldn't it only be those that are docile by the Bible that that would be affected by this imaginary curse? So how comes the curse still affects you ones that say that you're not under curses? Why is that? And there's even a scripture for people like this that speak like that. And I'm going to find it right now. This is Deuteronomy chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 18. Lest there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the from the power of power to go and serve the powers of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gal and wormwood, and it come to pass when he hears when he heareth the words of this curse. That he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Do I walk in do I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to first? And that's for all you people, man. You're saying we ain't cursed, man. We ain't cursed. 
right? I don't believe in all that cursed stuff. Yet when you try and go out there to try and find a blessing, you don't find it, right? You end up still cursed, man. You, you don't end up escaping out of nothing. You try and get money, right? You try and run away and do escape in all these different ways. And it never works, man. And why doesn't it work? Because your hawa has got a spiritual thing on you that's making you curse, whether you like it or not. It don't matter what you look like. You can be able to blend in a bit. You kind of look like a bit of a tanned Caucasian guy, you know? And you only really vibe with Edomite women, right? You might try that route. You've got a baguette flying around. You've got 25 gajillion passports and all this. And you might think, I can escape the curses this way. No, you can't escape the curses because you're an Israelite anyway. You might look Filipino. If you're an Israelite, you ain't escaping them curses, man. Apart from if you believe in Yahweh Shai. That's the only way. Because he's been made a curse for us. And even still, we're still under the curses until the kingdom anyway. So if you try and venture off and try and do anything, you're going to find out the hard way that we're under the curses still. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 32. Not according to the covenant. I'll read verse 31 again. Behold, the days come and say for Yahweh that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the, how, by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh, but this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. So now it's saying, just calling them the house of Israel. It's no longer calling them the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Because ultimately, we're going to be joined back together, man. And it speaks about this in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, right? It speaks about it. No, you know what? Let me just prove that too. Ezekiel chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 22. And I will make them one nation and land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king unto them all. That's going to be King David. And they shall no more be two more nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So there's not, when we get the covenant back, we're not going to be separating ourselves into southern kingdom and northern kingdom no more. <coughs> we're going to be, the house of Israel, <coughs> we're going to be the house of Israel, we're going to be the Israelites, right? And that's why the 12 tribe sign is a spiritual thing, because that's the symbolic way of the whole nation of Israel, the whole nation of Israel being um, joined back together. And that's the symbolic way, that's the symbolic, that's the symbolism of what that um, 12 tribe sharp means, man. Which people are trying to say again is not real, but yet all those people are under the curses, so how could it not be real? Verse 33, but this shall, Jeremiah 31 and 33, but this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, say for Yahweh, I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, say, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, say for Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity. I don't remember their sin no more. And that's pretty much mentioned exactly the same word for word in Hebrews, the eighth chapter, man. Right? And in the last part of that, when men mention what the covenant is, it says, and they shall no longer teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother. And that's how, going back to what I read at the beginning, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 21, thy people also shall all be righteous, and, they sh and thy people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. That's how all the people of Israel are going to be righteous, man, because they're going to have the laws written in them. And there's no longer going to be a need for another Israelite to tell another Israelite anything. There's no longer going to be, need, be the need if a, if a man or a woman out there has got children. There's no longer going to be a need for them to tell tell their child about Yahweh, or Hashem Yahweh Shai. They're going to know about it already. You're not going to have to say, you know, we're Israelites, right? They're going to know. You ain't going to, have, like how our parents or a lot of our parents didn't know that we was Israelites or didn't believe it or didn't tell us or whatever, right? Maybe they didn't know, didn't believe it, didn't speak about it, didn't or heard it and kind of thought it wasn't relevant to speak on. But they never told us, right? We had to get our spiritual fathers on the earth that told us about these things, man. And the way how they received it was from the spirit of Yahweh 
pulling it down onto the earth, man. And that valley of dry bones getting woken back up so that people can know who they are again, man. And that's why none of these people out there can make us feel like garbage anymore, man, because we know that we're Israelites and we know that the thing, reason why these things are happening to us is because of a curse, right? They can't make us feel bad about ourselves no more. We end up making them feel bad about themselves because we know that these things happen as part of prophecy. And just like how these things happen to us as part of prophecy, the things that are going to happen to them is also part of prophecy, man. We just become annoyed that the wicked are in, power, are in leadership, but they can't really make us feel no kind of emotions towards them like that no more, man. They can't do it. We end up making rocking their world, man. They ain't rocking our world. We end up rocking theirs. When they try and talk to us, or when they try and get on a comment board scoffing, or when they end up trying to leave a comment and then try to act like they know about that and as well, and they end up seeing them getting bugged out, man. They go from trying to talk righteous to making chocolate mushroom, to, to making magic mushroom chocolates, man, right? Somewhere out in Brazil, bugged out. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come safely, however, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I taught them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. And that's because it's a new covenant, man, established upon better promises, as it says in the sixth verse. Verse 10, for this is the covenant I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh, I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I'll be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. And how can you not love that scripture, man? How can you as an Israelite hear that scripture and not think, man, I want that to happen, right? And that's why in that day when that karagma comes, man, right? And they're trying to make you sell out the Lord for your life that really you ain't living no flashy life right now and we've seen the people that have got them flashy lives that we might look at and be like man that i wouldn't mind mind a life a bit like that but you only know, think about the kingdom right but then we see how them lives that these people have right now in this world require them to keep their mouth zipped and they can't say nothing right they're not allowed to talk about the evil that they see women do the evil that they see men do they're not allowed to say nothing they have to just enjoy their money keep it zipped and shut their mouths that's what they have to do. And then they're always continually, um, it's a lucky, they're always continually selling out for the money anyway, then. It's a lucky, man. It's a lucky. Nose is running in it, man. It's a lucky. They're always just um, running their mouths anyway. You see? They're always just running their mouths about worldly stuff, then. And they ain't ever got the bottle to say anything deep because. They're scared they're going to get cancelled and they're going to lose all them trinkets, man. And that's why you've got the whole red pill community out there shaking up because all their leaders are getting shown that, listen, man, you ain't, you need to fix up, right? That's what it's being shown, man, because the majority of those people in that red pill movement anyway, you're Israelites, right? And you've heard about the truth. You've heard that you're an Israelite. You've heard it. And that's why within the majority of all you people's things, you're always talking about God and you're always relying, relying, relaying things back to the scriptures because you heard the apostles of Great Millstone talking about women long before you even made some of your YouTube channels and you know you did, man. You know you did, right? But you tried to say, I'm just going to take that part of the doctrine, burning out women doctrine, and I'm going to run with that bit and I'm going to make some money off that. And some of you did that, man. But you won't admit it, though. And really, it's a lot of you that did that. Right? Because you know that the Bible is really the red pill truth. The so-called red pill truth. And the Bible's got way more truth than any of the things that you people are talking about. Even though you people do know some things about how the world works and that. But you're denying who you are though. How, how come you ain't saying that on all these videos that I got hundreds of thousands of views? How come you ain't talking about none of that on there? Huh? Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I'll be to them a power and they shall be to me a people and they shall not cheat every man's neighbour and every man's brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least 
to the greatest. For I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So how can you not like that? And here's the thing, man, that puts the nail in all you people's coffins that want to talk smack, man. Right? And you want to look at the people that are reading the Bible rather than hear the word, man. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the, to found the wise. Why don't I read that again? But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Right? So the people that don't seem like they know what they're talking about are going to be the people that actually do know what they're talking about. And the people that do seem like they know what they're talking about, when it's all said and gone, done, they're going to realize it's going to be made shown that they don't know what they're talking about, man. But for now, we have to just wait to see all these prophecies come to pass, man. And I'm going to end the lesson there, right? The new covenant is only for the Israelites. And that's what's going to cause for all the Israelites to be all righteous. And I'm going to end the lesson there. Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. All praises to Yahweh. Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Ba'asham Makakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Shalom.